Hi, and welcome to the weekly wrap up for this Friday, September 20th, 2024. Thanks for tuning in as always. Please hit that like, subscribe and share and smash the notification button so you don't miss a moment of these updates. As always, a lot to cover, so let's get started. So this week shows we had the wonderful Eli, Eli Weber. We had Perium co-founder Amy Werner. We also had Joe Williams and his writing partner who was Incognito Leslie. Uh, we had Chris, the, the founder of the channel for a Q&A, uh, Mr. David Mahoney, and of course, Nick Benyamin with a brief presentation. We're excited to announce next week, we have some, uh, uh, some brand new guests. Uh, this is a very exciting one for us amongst all of them. The one and only Peter Schiff, who is a very notable uh, chief economist and a Fox News contributor amongst many, is going to be coming on our podcast to share everything he knows about the financial reset, the housing market, and all things considered uh, concerning precious metals. Uh, we're bringing a return guest, a good friend of mine, and I've known a long time. We had him on last November. He went anonymously as B. Uh, he works for a major financial institution, and he is a contrarian in that institution, so he's going against the grain. Uh, he's sticking his neck out to do this for us. He's going to be showing us the chart results for the remainder of the year and a side-by-side -side comparison of what he shared last year to see just how accurate he was. Now, I'm putting this on camera. He was absolutely right. I was wrong. I didn't want it to be this year. I wanted it to be last year like all of you or the year prior. In reality, it is this year, and his charts line up beautifully. So we want to be humble and admit when we're wrong or we missed the mark, and I'm taking ownership of that. I'm not perfect. I apologize, but because I can only do what I can do. But we're always happy to give credit where credit is due. And he nailed it bullseye right on the head. So he's coming back to give us his insights for the fourth quarter. Uh, and then we have uh, the wonderful Denise Bolin. We haven't seen her in a while. So we're going to be with her uh, next week as well. We always look forward to that podcast. So here are the headlines. For over a century, the Campbell Soup Company has been a household name that is synonymous with its iconic red and white canned soups. But after over 100 years, 102 to be exact, the beloved brand <clears throat> is embarking on a significant change by dropping, quote, soup from its official name, transitioning to simply the Campbell's Company. IBM has been laying off a substantial number of employees this week and is trying to keep it quiet, their sources have said. One IBM employee told the register that IBM Cloud experienced a massive layoff in the past few days that affected thousands of people. <clears throat> Unlike traditional layoffs, this one was done clandestine and secret, the insider said. My manager told me that they were required to sign an NDA to not talk about the specifics. <clears throat> Excuse me, EYM Pizza, which operates roughly 140 Pizza Hut locations within Texas, Wisconsin, Ohio, and Indiana has faced some serious financial difficulties and has recently closed over 15 locations in the Ohio and Indiana area. The debtor filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection in the Eastern District of Texas on July 22nd after Pizza Hut sued the franchisee for non-payment of royalties. The debtor has left some 50,000 in assets and 500,000 to 1 million in liabilities. BioQual, optic, uh, BioQQ said on NASDAQ said that Friday it has implemented a reduction in workforce of approximately 10% of its employees effective September 9th of this year. Company said that the reduction in workforce was a cost cutting measure due to the decrease in revenue and profitability in the last year. For the first time since 2020, the Fed historic rates have been cut at 50 basis points on Wednesday. The cut is slated to be one of several made all the way through 2027. This paves the way for a massive uphill gains for cryptos, gold, silver, and oil, and in turn will devalue the dollar against foreign currencies just one month prior to the historic BRICS summits on October 22nd. House of Representatives have failed to pass a stopgap government funding bill that would have kept funding at current levels until March 28th of 2025. The bill also included a provision requiring proof of citizenship nationwide for U.S. voter registration. The spending bill failed in a 220 to 202 vote. 206 Democrats and 14 Republicans opposed the measure, while 199 Republicans and three Democrats voted in favor of it. General Mills said it agreed to sell its North American yogurt business, including its Yoplait brand, to two French dairy companies, for a total of $2.1 billion in cash, as the Cheerios and Bisquick maker focuses on higher margin brands. 
the, Minneap the Minneapolis, Minnesota company said that the U.S. and Canadian businesses, which brought in about $1.5 billion in physical 2024 net sales, will operate independently after the deal is completed. Privately held Lactalis will buy the U.S. business and dairy cooperative Sodial in acquiring the Canadian unit. <clears throat> Huge TV chef's restaurant chain loses, closes last branch after 34 years. The last remaining branch of a celebrity chef's restaurant chain has closed its doors. In 1990, Simon Ridner brought Greens, a vegetarian-based restaurant in West Didsbury, Manchester, alongside Simon Connolly. He became its chef after the business partners realized they were unable to afford to hire someone. Greens then appeared in the AA guide for 31 of the last 33 years, becoming the first purely vegetarian restaurant to appear in the good food guide. Volkswagen may be set to slash at least 15,000 jobs in an effort to cut costs as it battles against stiff competition. Verizon is the latest company to announce cuts saying on Thursday, it expects to lose 4,800 employees by March of 2025 with about half of those leaving in September of 24 per market watch. The telecom giant also said it will charge up to 1.9 billion before taxes in severance pay. As recently as February, Verizon reported it had 105,400 full-time employees. So roughly 4.5% of its headcount head will be cut by the end of March. Tupperware, the iconic American brand known the world over for its plastic and food containers is on the brink of bankruptcy. The 78-year-old company has been battling for years to revive its fortunes. Amidst debt of more than $700 million, it could file for bankruptcy as soon as this week, according to Bloomberg. Qualcomm, the local technology company designing chips that power smartphones, laptops, virtual reality headsets, as well as next-generation cars, is laying off 226 San Diego, California workers. The company said in a statement to the Union Tribune on Friday that this headcount reduction is part of its, quote, diversification strategy, unquote, for the business. A British plumber and three Americans are among 37 people sentenced to death on charges of taking part in a murky coup plot in order to overthrow the Congolese president. Yusuf Inagzi is to be executed alongside five other foreigners following a military tribunal in the country's capital, Kinsaha. Sean P. Diddy Combs has been charged with sex trafficking by force transportation to engage in prostitution and racketeering conspiracy, alleging he ran an enterprise that he engaged in sex trafficking, forced labor, and or kidnapping arson and other crimes, according to the indictment that was sealed, unsealed on Tuesday. Major U.S. US Tier 1 banks closed 55 branches in the last two weeks with more to come. Meyer Burger Technology, 10% uh, in Zurich trading, it was lost on Wednesday after saying that its CEO and CFO are leaving the company as part of a sweeping restructuring plan that will also slash nearly 20% of its global workforce. CEO Gunter Ufritz is stepping down immediately and will be replaced by Chairman Franz Richter, as well as CFO Marcus Niklas also will depart by the end of September while the company plans to cut its workforce from 1,050 to 850 employees by the end of 2025. <clears throat> Electric vehicle charging equipment manufacturer Blink Charging said on Tuesday that will lay off roughly 14% of its global workforce in an attempt to reduce operational costs. The layoff will begin immediately and is expected to result in annualized savings of roughly 9 million, the company said. The layoffs will be completed in the first quarter of 2025, the company had added. In Tel Aviv, Israel launched a wave of airstrikes against Hezbollah targets in Lebanon, in Lebanon on Thursday, as the militant group's leader said, two days of debilitating attacks on its members amounted to a declaration of war. The strikes came moments before Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah began to speak about the attacks earlier this week that caused pagers and walkie-talkies carriers by thousands of the group's members to explode killing 37 people and injuring nearly 3,000. Now we go to the uh, real-time stats for gold, silver, and Brent crude oil. As of the time of this broadcast, 
Gold is at an all-time high of $2,615.90. Silver at an all-time high of $31.43. And Brent crude at $74.81. Now here are the week's notable deaths and resignations. Mike Sneesby has announced his resignation as CEO of Nine Entertainment, one of Australia's largest media groups. <clears throat> Excuse me. The move follows months of turmoil, including the passing of a staff of no coincidence motion against Sneesby and the group's board of directors. Sneesby departure takes effect at the end of the month. He will be replaced on an acting basis by CFO and Chief Strategy Officer Matt Stanton while a recruitment process is underway. The entire staff of Annapurna Interactive, the video game division at Megan Ellison's Annapura has resigned, according to a report from Bloomberg citing multiple sources. A rep for the company did not comment on the story. On September 6, Annapura said that its president, Nathan Gary, who also oversaw the company's video game operations, would be exiting along with the co-heads of Annapura's indie gaming division, Deborah Mars and Nathan Vell. This week, Bloomberg reports that Gary and the staffers within the company's gaming division, over two dozen in total, resigned after negotiations to spin off the video game division from the larger company fell through. <clears throat> Nathalie Roos, the CEO of Lipton Teas and Infusions, has chosen to leave the tea and herbal drinks business. In a statement, the Netherlands-based group said Roos had, for personal reasons, in agreement with the board, decided to step down. Roos joined Lipton Teas and Infusion in 20, 2022 after five years at El Oriel. NBA insider Adrian Wojnarowski announced Wednesday he's retiring from ESPN and the news industry. Wojnarowski, 55, has agreed to become the general manager of the men's basketball program at St. Bonaventure, Bonaventure, his alma mater. Within his role within the Bonnies, Wojnarowski will work on name, image, and likeness opportunities and serve as a liaison with collectives. In addition, he will involve himself in transfer portal management, recruit, family, as well as alumni player relationships, professional player programs, and program fundraising. According to Reuters, Starbucks said on Monday that its North American CEO, Michael Conway, has decided to retire after about 11 years at the coffee chain. This move comes amid newly appointed Chief Executive Officer Brian Nichols' turnaround plan focusing on Starbucks operations within the U.S. According to Portland, Oregon-based identity verification company, Share ID has named Rebecca Grimes as its new chief revenue officer. Grimes previously was chief sales and marketing officer at SearchSpring and the chief revenue officer at Ruby. She also spent time at Cheetah Digital, Power Reviews, and Vibes. Indian opposition leader Arvind Kajawal said he will resign as the chief minister of the capital's New Delhi regional government a day after his release from prison on bail for a corruption case. He says, quote, today I have come to ask the public uh, whether you consider Kurjival honest or criminal. I will resign from the post of chief minister two days from today and ask people whether I'm honest, he said on Sunday. <clears throat> Stem on at Nice Monday said that John Carrington has stepped down as CEO and as a member of the board of directors effective immediately, the company has named David Busby as interim CEO. Carrington will serve in an advisory capacity through December 31st of this year. A seven independent directors of DNA testing company 23andMe resigned Tuesday following a protracted negotiation with founder and chief executive Ann Wojcicki over her plan to take the company private. In its latest challenge for 23andMe, the company has struggled to find a profitable business model. The stock, fell, stock price fell to 30 cents per share after hours on Tuesday at the price, the company is worth less than the cash on the balance sheet. Post off, the post office chief executive, Nick Reed, is step, set to step down from the role in March, the company has said. The firm, which is set to announce Neil Brockhurst as acting CEO, has confirmed the news this morning. Mr. Reed has taken a step back from his role in July in order to prepare for the next stage of the Horizon IT scandal inquiry with Mr. Brocklehurst becoming interim chief operating officer. Chief executive of East Hearst District Council has left the role after five years. The authority confirmed Richard Cassidy was leaving with immediate effect with deputy 
Helen Standen replacing him on a temporary basis. Green Council Leader Ben Crystal said, we thank Richard for his service and leadership over the past five years and wish him every success and happiness for the future. Mike Nelson, a longtime communications executive for CBS television stations is leaving the network after 22 years. And now on to the death. Stephen Pete, a former NHL forward who played four seasons with the Washington Capitals, has died tragically from injury sustained in an accident two weeks ago. Simple Minds drummer Kenny Hyslop has died at age 73 after struggling with poor health. The musician who joined the famous Scottish band uh, for a year from 1981 has reportedly been ill for some time prior to his death. A cause of death has not yet been confirmed. Best-selling author Nelson DeMille has died. The writer died on September 17th from esophageal cancer. His family confirmed to CBS News and the New York Post. Nelson fought a valiant nine-month battle with esophageal cancer, true to form. He faced this ordeal with courage, grace, and good humor, his family said in a statement to CBS News. Veteran Eagles hit maker and occasional actor J.D. Souther has passed away at his home in New Mexico. The 78-year-old star recognized for penning anthems like New Kid in Town, Best of My Love, also surprised many with stints in Hollywood. Eagles representative confirmed the songwriter's death to the Los Angeles Times, noting he passed away peacefully on Tuesday in his home. Former Aston Villa player Gary Shaw has died at age 63 from injury sustained in a fall. Shaw came through the youth ranks at Aston Villa, scoring 79 goals in 213 games. If you're a music lover, chances are you know and love a song written by the late Billy Ed Wheeler. Wheeler's family confirmed that he passed away at his home on Monday, September 16th, at the age of 91. He was a songwriter, performer, and visual arts who artist who wrote songs for over 160 artists and many different genres to include Elvis Presley, Johnny Cash, Kenny Rogers, Neil Young, Jefferson Airplane, and Florence and the Machine. See hot. Suraja, the chip industry pioneer who is best known for co-founding Marvel Technology, has died at the age of 63, according to a statement from a company where he serves on the board. The billionaire who was born and raised in Jakarta started Marvel Technology with his brothers Panta Sujarda and his wife Wiri Dai in 1995 before leading it to become one of the world's largest chip makers. British pole vaulter Ethan Walsh has passed away following a car accident on September 11th, according to a statement released by his family. He was 27. Former Italy forward Salvador Toto Schiellari has died at age 59, the Palmero Hospital said, where he was being treated for colon cancer on a statement on Wednesday. Schiellari rose to international fame at the 1990 World Cup in Italy where he starred for Aruzzi, scoring six goals in order to win the Golden Boot. America's Got Talent alum, Emily Gold, who competed alongside her Los Osos High School varsity dance team on season 19 of the show earlier this year has died by suicide. The San Bernardino County Sheriff Coroner Department has confirmed to E! Entertainment News she was 17. A beloved charity boss who has supported thousands of vulnerable Aussies has died unexpectedly, sparking an outpouring of tributes. Scott Johnson, the Perth-based founder of Assisting Your Life to Achieve, died on September 9th at just the age of 40. <clears throat> Otis Davis, an Olympic 400 meter and four by 400 gold medalist in 1960, has died Saturday at the age of 82, according to the University of Oregon, his alma mater and world athletics. At the 1960 Rome Games, Davis won the 400 meter in a famous photo finish over diving German Karl Kaufmann. <clears throat> Excuse me, both men went under the world record and were credited with a hand hand timing of 44.9. Upon further examination, Davis' auto time was corrected to 45.07 to Kaufmann's 45.08. Fred Nall Hollis, an award-winning, world-renowned Alabama visual artist, died on Saturday, according to a local arts center. He was 76. A three-year-old boy has died Sunday in Washington after falling into a neighbor's septic tank, local authorities reported. The young boy was playing with his older brother, four- and six-year-old neighbor in the town of Lakewood, less than one-hour drive southwest of Seattle, whereby the incident took place per Pierce County Sheriff's Office via USA Today. 
Kevin Lill is announced on Tuesday, September 17th. He is stepping down as chairman and CEO of 300 Entertainment at the end of the month. According to an internal memo per billboard, Lills will remain as a consultant until the end of the year. Helen Fisher has died of cancer at the age of 79, was a biological anthropologist who researched the chemical nature of human love and all that shapes and forms by scanning the brains of people in love and distilling her conclusions in a series of best-selling books. Mary McFadden, a fashion designer who drew on ancient themes for modern wear, weaving the colors of motifs of Greek antiquity, Egyptian mythology, and the Italian Renaissance into clothing that made her for years a fixture of hot couture has died September 13th in Southampton, New York. She was 85. An 82nd Airborne uh, paratrooper died during a training exercise at Fort Johnson, Louisiana last week. Fort Johnson Public Affairs Office confirmed in a statement provided to Task and Purpose, PFC Matthew Perez was killed September 13th in a statement from the 82nd Airborne Division. Perez was assigned to Fort Liberty in the Division's 2nd Battalion, 505th Parachute Infantry Regiment, 3rd Brigade Combat Team. <clears throat> Renowned Mexican soccer journalist Andre Marin died on Monday morning at the age of 52. In 2022, Marin revealed that he had been dealing with a bacterial infection for many years. After suffering from pneumonia and undergoing several hospitalizations, Marin received a double lung transplant earlier this month. TUDN confirmed to the TV presenter's passing on Monday. Novelist Elias Khoury, one of Lebanon's most renowned writers, and a fervent advocate of the Palestinian cause died on Sunday from an illness at age 76, sources close to his family told AFP. Curry, who was born in 1948 to a Christian family in Beirut, died in the Lebanese capital where he had been hospitalized for many months, sources say. Pravin Gordon, the former South African finance minister, renowned for his reform of the country's tax system and staunch fight against corruption, died Friday at age 75 with a brief battle of cancer, his family announced. Gordon, who held the finance minister post twice from 2009 to 2014, and again from 2015 to 2017, was a central figure in South Africa's efforts in order to combat the widespread corruption that plagued the government during the presidency of Jacob Zuma. His dedication to tackling what would become known as state capture, the undue influence of private interest over state institutions, earned him both acclaim and criticism, but his legacy as a defender of public resources remains solid. Sierra Leone, Sierra Leone born US ballerina, Michaelia Mabinti de Prince dies at age 29. Gabriel Gonzalez, the original trumpeter for the band No Doubt, passed away in a motor motorcycle accident. He was 57. A representative of Gonzalez family confirmed to Spin Magazine, the musician died on September 12th in the fatal accident in Hermosa Beach, California. Jose Mauro, the overlooked Brazilian singer-songwriter who gained a cult following in absentia after disappearing in the 1970s, has died after a short illness. Far Out Recordings, the record label whose reissue of Morrow's Obnoxious led to the discovery that he was alive, confirmed the news. Morrow was 75. A leader of the Liberal Democrats opposition group on Milton Keynes City Council has died while attending his party's annual conference. Robin Bradburn, 68, had also served as deputy leader of the council where the Libs, Dems, and Labor formed a progressive alliance. The party conference in Brighton held a minute's silence for him on Sunday afternoon. His wife, Marie Bradburn, is the current mayor of that city, and her daughter, Carrie Bradburn, is also a Lib Dem counselor. Neil Huffman, a well-known horseman and respected figure in Kentucky's horse racing community, has died at the age of 87. Huffman's deep love for horses and contributions to the thoroughbred racing industry span more than 50 years, leaving behind a legacy of hard work, dedication, and a warm personality. Caterina Valente, a French-Italian singing star who spoke six languages and sang in 11, releasing hit records throughout Europe and performing on television with Dean Martin and Perry Como, died September 9th at her home in Lugano, Switzerland. She was 93. Her agent announced the death in a statement but not, did not cite a cause. Tito Jackson, one of the original Jackson Five Brothers founding members of the iconic group, has died at the age of 70, according to his family, on September 15th. Tito's sons, TJ, 
Taj and Terrell shared the news of his sudden passing in a statement posted on Instagram. Chad McQueen, son of the legendary actor Steve McQueen, who played Dutch in the Karate Kid film series, died Wednesday in Palm Springs. He was 63. Safiya Binzar, a pioneering artist who eternalized folk heritage in her native Saudi Arabia, died on September 12th at the age of 86. The news was first reported by Abu Dhabi-based publication, The National. Bingar's trailblazing career was revolved the idiosyncrasies of indigenous Saudi culture, <clears throat> which was increasingly imperiled by modernization in the mid 19th century. Aware of the limitations in oral histories at that time, record keeping was not common practice within the Arabian Gulf. Bingar documented traditional architecture and domestic rituals over several years. Once settled, she translated these studies into intricate fabric colleagues, collages, excuse me, expressive sketches and boldly colored paintings. Ted Drews Jr., an icon of the Midwest, whose famous frozen custard brought joy and sweet summer relief to many generations has died at the age of 96. When Dairy Queen introduced its blizzard in 1985. They acknowledged that the concept was inspired in fact by Drews. Sundays today, today's Willie Geist remembers a life well lived. Alberto Fujimori, the former Peruvian authoritarian president has died at the age of 86. He had been serving a 25 year prison sentence for human rights abuses, but was later released in December of last year on a humanitarian pardon for his ailing health. Umar Mahoud, a teenager who appeared in the BBC One show, Freddie Flintoff's Field of Dreams has died in a car crash at the age of 18. Kuwait mourns the loss of former prime minister Sheikh Jaber al -Mu Mukabar al Sabah, who's passed away at the age of 82, Mahmoud School, Pentwortham Priori Academy confirmed that he died in an accident near Preston, Lancashire, after an Audi A3 Sport left the road and smashed into trees on Tuesday, September 10th. Former South African minister Pravin Gordon, a veteran of the anti apartheid struggle, has died from cancer at the age of 75. He retired from politics after May's election, where the ANC lost its parliamentary majority for the first time since 1994. The ex-minister passed away in a hospital early Friday, surrounded by family. A rider has died while taking part in a motocross event at the weekend. Uh, emergency services, including the air ambulance, were called out to track at West Row near Bury St. Edmunds, Suffolk on Sunday, but were unable to save the teenager named on social media as George Edwards. George, who is age 17, was a member of the Kickstart MX track in South Benfleet, Exus, Ex Essex. Excuse me, Carl Moline, the acclaimed artist best known for his co-creation, Malika Frey, the Vampire Slayer of the Future, with Joss Whedon in Buffy the Vampire Slayer, as well as Crossigan's Route 666 with Tony Bedard, has passed away at the age of 51. Moline has been dealing with a number of health issues over the last few years. And finally, Former Australia and New South Wales fast bowler Frank Mission has passed away at the age of 85. Mission played five tests across the famous 1960-61 home series against the West Indies in the 1961 Ashes Tour to England, but his test career was cut short by an Achilles injury. He took 16 wickets at 38.50, including a career best four for 58 against West Indies and Melbourne. And this concludes the deaths and resignations. Now onto the commentary section. In 1991, I saw a t-shirt that changed the trajectory of my life and of my thinking. It was one of those pieces of merchandise I wish I had got at the time and I still think about it. And it simply said this, I'm not going to raise my standard, I'm not going to lower my standards in order to raise yours. Folks, we need to stay humble and focused on what we're coming into. For all that we share, there's a lot that we don't share because it needs to be vetted in a certain way in a certain process for processing. And some of you seem to think that what you see on camera is all you see. That's not true. Um, our guests share a lot of things with us offline that we don't share in order to protect privacy and the courtesy of what they're sharing is sensitive information. So it just gives you an idea. I'm also gonna quote a quote from a, a famous former Christian missionary, John Bunyan, who said it best, if my life is fruitless, it doesn't matter who praises me, but if my life is fruitful, it also doesn't matter who criticizes me. And this is an encouragement to our audience 
Never give your power to anyone that only the Lord can give you and deserves back from you. Because every time that you give power over to a reprobate mind, the enemy gains crown. He's gained well and more than enough over the years. Let's put a stop to his reign in the collective. We can't please everybody. And the Bible says to be God pleasers, not man pleasers. So for those of you who don't like our content, who don't like me, who don't like the shirt I wear, whatever it is that your issue is, that's fine. Just please graciously leave, leave center stage left. If this doesn't work for you, go somewhere else. But don't leave snarky and, and mean-spirited comments. It's not appreciated by me or by our followers. And if you would stop doing it, we wouldn't have to keep bringing it up. So, you know, it's not useless information. It's, it's very useful. If it's not useful for you, then leave. There's Why are you here? There's no reason for you to be here. You're not contributing anything. So just go. And let this be a positive place for the rest of us. Okay? Thank you. That concludes this weekly wrap-up. Thanks for listening. As always, as we gave you breaking news this week on the rate cut, as things come out and we anticipate they will, we'll bring them to you as soon as we can. Have a great and safe weekend, and we look forward to seeing you on the podcast next week. Take care, God bless, and goodbye for now.